a terrifying disappearance. This crime had a lot of people on edge, worried about their parents, their families, their wives. A relentless predator. We were real concerned that we're dealing with a serial killer. And a baffling trail of clues. Just an amazingly high-risk crime for this offender. Criminal profiler Dale Hinman joins investigators on the hunt for a brazen killer. These two victims are so dissimilar, no one is safe from this man. What's your emergency? In Portsmouth, Ohio, 72-year-old Evelyn Howard is reported missing by her daughter. I'm 73. Need to go out to 139 Eden Park. Be the Howard residence. 73-24-73. At first, everything seems in its place. But then, Sergeant Sean Sparks of the Scioto Sheriff's Office makes a disturbing discovery. In the back bedroom, on the floor, I know some blood blotches, and the uh, mattress along with the blanket was missing. At that point, I knew it was definitely more than missing persons. I need detects to dispatch to this location. I've got blood at the scene. Captain David Hall and Chief Deputy Huey Blair take over the investigation. They scour the home for clues. You couldn't tell anything had been disturbed. Her purse was there, the car was there, the keys were there. Detectives are puzzled. The mattress was missing. That's the first time I'd ever noticed anything like that in my 30 years of law enforcement. Was well, that all you found? Uh, we may have found something here on the bed, we're not sure. As the CSI processes the scene, the K-9 team is called in. The K-9 tracked from the side of the house to the front of the house. We were hoping that the K-9 is going to keep on going somewhere, but it actually stopped by the roadway, which indicates that she was either put in a vehicle or she got into a vehicle right there the veteran detectives know in a missing person case the first 48 hours are critical if they have any hope of finding mrs. Howard alive especially if she's been injured they must act fast officers canvass the neighborhood I'm sort of sports with so sort of kind of sheriff's office you know she has a boyfriend or, or not that I'm like aware of Maybe one of them seen strange there or witnessed a vehicle or maybe a visitor that came to the house. Anything that may help us in the crime itself with you. The search for leads goes nowhere. Please let us know. Thank you very much. Thanks. But they do gain some insight into the missing woman. Evelyn Howard had grown children, even had grandchildren. Evelyn uh, was a model citizen, and it seemed like her neighbors liked her pretty well. Nobody talked ill of her when we canvassed the area. She was a widow. Her husband died a few months earlier. She was pretty much alone all the time, and somebody knew that. Lab tests show the blood found at the scene is Howard's. There was still the possibility that she may have been alive. Finding the elderly widow is more urgent than ever. The highway patrol provided a helicopter for it. And we flew the area around there, probably a five or ten mile radius, looking for anything. But the search fails to turn up a single lead. Then, three weeks after Mrs. Howard disappeared, investigators get a call from a hunter. The hunter found the mattress. I think he felt it was suspicious because there was a large amount of uh, blood in the middle of the mattress. When we found the mattress and the bed clothing, we called the police department to conduct a search. And we called the BCI, that's state lab, to come and process the scene. 
Not long into the search, they make a grim discovery. Aaron, does that look like a body to you? I saw a white object down at the foot of the hill, and then I climbed down and I seen the, it was a body. 7302, 73. It's the body of an elderly woman, wrapped in a comforter and bound with rope. Advise everyone in the search, we think we found her. The medical examiner confirms it's Evelyn Howard. The missing persons case is now a homicide investigation. We hated it that we had to find her like this, but then we were able to focus more on what we had to do. The next day, Detective Blair gets yeah. the autopsy results. The elderly woman had been sexually assaulted, beaten, and strangled. She has a, you know, a nasty cut over her cheekbone, uh, and uh, so that would have caused a lot of the blood on the mattress. Yeah, you know, any, anything on the face bleeds a lot. And the killer course, left his course, DNA at the, the scene. The going to pick the cause of death and strangulation. Thanks. In the state of Ohio, where we find DNA evidence like this, we can run that against anybody that's been incarcerated in the system. But there's no match. Nearly a month after Mrs. Howard's murder, detectives still have no suspects. And the chances of finding her killer grow slimmer each day. Using her insight into criminal behavior, Special Agent Dale Hinman has helped police crack countless homicides. When I reviewed the case file, I realized what great lengths the offender went to to cover this crime. This suggested he probably knew this victim, and he may do this again. Can a visit to the crime scenes put investigators on the killer's trail? Evelyn Howard has been sexually assaulted and murdered, but investigators are short on leads. Special Agent Dale Hinman meets with detectives Blair and Hall to review the case. Based on what we knew about Mrs. Howard, she was a very low-risk victim. I wanted to go to the scene to see if there was any information we could develop that would help focus this investigation. This type of neighborhood, we never had any type of crime in that neighborhood. I mean, it's a pretty low-key neighborhood. How did the victim get along with her neighbors? Was there anybody who was angry with her for any specific reason? We never heard anything bad about her or anything negative about her. Agent Hinman makes a key observation. I mean, you can't look at a house like this and tell who's going to live inside. You know, it could be that um, she had a husband and an entire family that lives here. This really suggests that the person who would come to a house like this may know that she was here and that she was alone. I'm going to show you where the assault took place in the bedroom. When we got here, the mattress was gone. All there was was springs, the frame. Mm -hmm. There was blood splatters on the wall. So this really suggests that the offender knew that the victim was alone and that nobody else would be arriving during the nighttime hours or else they might have taken the victim to another location. <sighs> and also the fact that he must have had a vehicle, a truck or a van that's large enough to carry the mattress and the victim and all of the bed clothing in one trip. I believe you're right, but we didn't have no signs of anybody seeing mm -hmm. anybody taking a mattress or a body out in front of the residence is very well lit. None of the neighbors saw anything. That suggests that the vehicle must have been parked somewhere else and then moved to this location when the individual had completed the crime and was removing all the items from the house. <gasps> daughter came, the deadbolt was in the open position. There was no forced entry. Was there any indication of any ransacking, any searching, any property that was missing? Not at all. Her purse was here, VCRs, television, glasses. Agent Hinman suspects Mrs. Howard knew her assailant and unwittingly opened her door to a killer. 
So if no money or items of value were taken, that really suggests that this is not a property crime. And if it's not that, it must be a sexually motivated crime. And if that's the case, he may have done this before or he'll do it again in the future. Following in the killer's footsteps, Agent Hinman asks to be taken to the woods where Mrs. Howard's body was found. Right here is uh, down over the bank is where we found the body. We found a mattress on up this road here that's probably 20 miles, give or take, from her residence. Well, and it seemed like about the last 10 miles were these narrow country roads. I mean, this is just an amazing distance for the residents to bring her all the way out here. <sighs> and this must be an area that he's familiar with. We're almost in the next county. We're so far out. This really suggests that the offender was trying to distance himself from where the crime occurred. And maybe he thought the victim's body would never be discovered where it is out here in this wooded area. Investigators also think they know why the killer removed the mattress and bedclothes. Well, he might be concerned with evidence transfer. Could mean also that he's criminally sophisticated from having been arrested in the past. A clear profile of the assailant is starting to emerge. Based on the distance the offender traveled with the victim's body, this told us the investigators should be looking for someone who lived closer to where the victim lived, knew that she was there alone, had some relationship to where the body was discovered, and had a criminal record. The longer the case goes unsolved, the greater the fear throughout this little Ohio town. This crime upset a lot of people because it was a middle-class neighborhood. And then I think it had a lot of people on edge worried about their older parents, their families, and their wives. Yes, Blair? Calls continue to pour into the Sheriff's Department's tip line. We chase down a lot of false leads, and you have to check out the false leads, because that false lead might turn into something that's good. Finally, all of investigators' legwork pays off. One of the tips led us to a drug dealer that had property located near where we found the mattress. Detectives identify him as Bobby Morgan. He and some other people were bragging at a party on a Friday night before Miss Howard was murdered. They knew an old lady they could knock off. The bells and whistles are going off. This is good information. Let's run with it. Was Evelyn Howard killed by a two-bit drug hustler? More than a month after the murder of Evelyn Howard, a tipster points the finger at a drug dealer named Bobby Morgan. Bobby Morgan appeared to be a very good suspect in this case. He lived in Portsmouth, not far from the victim. He owned property where her body was discovered, and he had a criminal record. We brought the suspect in. Captain Hall asks Morgan to give a DNA sample to prove his innocence. And, uh, of course, he denied any involvement. Individuals who use drugs are often very suspicious when they're asked to provide DNA. They think that law enforcement only wants the DNA to determine if they're using drugs, when in fact all they want it for is for elimination purposes. And then we asked him to take a computer voice stress analysis, and he wouldn't take it. Hall bears down on Morgan, and finally he agrees to a DNA test. The whole investigation hangs in the balance. But when the results come in, detectives are in for a surprise. The DNA from the victim did not match the suspect's DNA. Their prime suspect is released. And frustrated investigators are quickly running out of options. Back to square one. I'm going back talking to the family again. Back to every interview and everybody we've interviewed already. We're starting over again. But months turn into years without a single break in the case. 
and it seems a stone-cold killer has gotten away with murder. Then, more than five years after Mrs. Howard's murder, detectives get some startling news from more than 80 miles away in Fayette County. There was a young girl hitchhiking. Her body was found at a truck stop in Fayette County. They obtained DNA from that case. DCI came up with a match with the suspect's DNA to our case. Just as investigators feared, Evelyn Howard's murderer is still out there on the prowl. We're real concerned that we're dealing with a serial killer. I mean, where's he at? Who's next? Is he in our town? But this time, the perpetrator left a big clue. A note in which he claimed he couldn't stop killing people. Special Agent Hinman rejoins the investigation. So you have a case-to-case -case match between Mrs. Howard and this victim. Is this victim similar in any way to Mrs. Howard? Not in very many ways, no. She was beaten and strangled, but that's probably the only similarities. Mm -hmm. The hitchhiker seems to be a complete stranger to the offender, someone who was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I think we all realize that Mrs. Howard was a targeted victim, but this sounds more like a victim of opportunity. That's what it seems like. And something else stands out about this murder, the puzzling message left behind. This note was found at the convenience store across from the truck stop. Said, I'm going to kill a lot of people soon. Please stop me. I have killed people before. I cannot stop myself. Help me. So I won't do the things I have to do. Is the note a cry for help? Agent Hinman doesn't think so. Well, the fact that this individual left it in a convenience store where it may or may not have been found this doesn't really suggest to me that it's a cry for help. <sighs> this almost feels like he may be taunting you. He's going to kill more people, and it's a challenge. That's what we're afraid of. It's like, it's catch me if you can. So with two murders being connected with DNA, would you agree we'll be dealing with serial murder? Oh, I do. And it appears this individual is a sexual predator who's moving great distances now. He's mobile, he's adaptable. And because these two victims are so dissimilar, no one is safe from this man. With no leads and two dead bodies, can investigators stop a killer who claims he can't stop himself? DNA tests have confirmed that the man who killed Evelyn Howard has taken another victim. Detectives are determined to track him down. Because the victims, the crimes, and the locations were so dissimilar, this suggested that the offender was deliberately trying to prevent the detectives from linking the cases together. We're dealing with some type of sick, perverted person. No way to know who's next. There's going to be a kid. Is it going to be our neighbors? For the next few weeks, investigators pour through the Ohio State Criminal Database, looking for other crimes that might be even remotely related to their investigation. We didn't find anything that would give us any leads to our cases. Then, finally, six years after the widow's murder. 911, what is your emergency? And one year after detectives found the hitchhiker's body. I believe it was like the 4th of July weekend, our detectives have made an arrest of uh, one of Mrs. Howard's neighbors for sexual assault on a minor. The man's name is Daniel Payton. At the time Mrs. Howard was murdered, he worked as a foundry worker here in Portsmouth. Whenever the Fayette County murder happened, he uh, was a truck driver traveling mostly in Ohio. Just as Agent Hinman predicted, his second murder, targeting a hitchhiker, would have been a crime of opportunity. Detectives get a warrant to search Peyton's home and collect DNA evidence. We took the sample to BCI. They compared it to our case and the Fayette County case, and they came back a match. 
I had prayed about this case a lot, and then the break that came was just, to me, miraculous. As investigators theorized, Daniel Payton did live in Mrs. Howard's neighborhood. He knew that she lived alone. He had access to a truck on the night she was murdered, and he was very familiar with the wooded area where her body was discovered. Daniel Payton pleads guilty to the murders of Evelyn Howard and the Fayetteville hitchhiker. No one knows how many other lives he's claimed, but now his killing days are over. He's currently serving two life sentences. It's very rewarding for law enforcement to finally get their guy. Evelyn Howard was a loving mother and grandmother, and she should have been able to spend the rest of her life with her family around her. Thanks to the skill and perseverance of the investigative team at the Scioto County Sheriff's Office, Daniel Payton is locked up for life.